Hello everyone, I am Yejin Lee from Seoul National University presenting Mercy Efficient Embedding Reduction on Commodity Hardware via Subquery Memorization. This is a joint work with my colleagues at Seoul National University and my advisors Jay Lee and Tae Jun Ham. Recommended system is one of the most prominent applications of AI in that it can directly result in an increase to the company's revenue. That is the reason why many industry-leading companies like Facebook and Google are actively utilizing the recommender systems. And that is the reason why they draw a lot of attention from the research community. The left side figure shows the high-level overview of the Facebook DLR recommender model, which is one of the most well-known models. To predict clicking rate of a user, DA Auto model utilizes dense and sparse features of a user and an item to identify whether the user Kathy will be clicking the ad in her feed or not. For some models of DRM, processing these sparse features, which is highlighted with a red box, takes large portion of the runtime. There exist various types of sparse features, but one easy to understand example is the user's browsing history. Say that the user Kathy previously browsed pages for a notebook, bread, and pen. One way to represent this information is to use multi ad vector like this. However, the main issue here is that this representation is extremely sparse, which are often very difficult to process. To avoid such difficulty, most NM models, including DRRM, utilizes embeddings as shown in the figure. And embeddings are learned dense representation of sparse features, and multiple embedding vectors are stored in embedding table. For Kathy's previous browse items, notebook, bread, and pen is mapped to a dense embedding vector. Here, to collectively represent the multiple items that the user Kathy has recently browsed, what most recommended models do is an embedding reduction operation. In this embedding reduction operation, embedding vectors corresponding to the sparse input are fetched from the embedding table, and then the reduction is performed. Thus, embedding reduction is literally reducing multiple embedding vectors into a single vector, and the reduction operator may vary, but the summation in the figure is the most popular choice for Facebook's DLRM model. Here is an example from the previous slide. Our purpose is to represent Kathy's browse history, notebook, bread, and pen into a single vector, so we are going to perform embedding reduction on them. The set of features whose embeddings are going to be reduced is called query from now on. First, the embedding vectors for notebook, bread, and pen are fetched from the memory, and their sum is computed and then returned. According to research from Facebook, they fetch around 20 to 80 embedding vectors for a single embedding reduction operation. Embedding reduction is a simple yet important operation. In fact, this simple operation accounts for more than 80% of the query runtime in several recommended models that Facebook utilizes. As a result, improving the performance of this operation directly leads to reduction in query runtime. So, to optimize embedding reduction, we need to find out what determines the throughput of embedding reduction. Embedding reduction operations throughput is known to be bounded by memory bandwidth. This is because embedding reduction itself is a memory-bound operation, and the system memory bandwidth limits the number of embedding vectors that can be fetched from memory per unit time. One obvious solution for optimizing embedding reduction operation is to improve system's memory bandwidth but it incurs a significant cost. A better approach would be to reduce the total number of embedding vectors to fetch from the memory, and this is what Mercy aims to do. One interesting thing we find is that some set of features co-appear much more frequently than others. For example, item pairs such as notebook and pen, shampoo and conditioner, bread and butter, toothpaste and toothbrush are likely to appear together in users' browsing history. Based on this observation, we suggest that we remember the reduction results for a set of frequently co-appearing features. For example, let's look at the case where we need to perform embedding reduction operation for two queries, Q1 and Q2. Without memorization, each of these queries would have required fetching four embedding vectors like this. 
On the other hand, if we had memoized reduction result for combinations listed at top of the slide, Q1 would require fetching only three embedding vectors, and Q2 would require fetching only two embedding vectors. As shown here, memoization can reduce the total number of memory fetches and thus can improve the throughput of this operation. Memoization is mostly effective when some sets of features co-appear much more frequently than others. To confirm this behavior, we plotted the correlation heat map for Amazon's top 150 products in each category, cell phones, electronics, and office products. As shown here, the heat map shows non-uniform distribution, and this indicates that there exist some item pairs that appear much more frequently than others. At a glance, the memoization seems like a trivial idea. However, there are several challenges that make the application of memoization much more difficult than it seems. The first challenge is to identify the combinations of features to memoize. Since the real-world embedding tables have more than 1 million embedding vectors, the total number of possible combinations exceeds 2 to the 1 millionth. For this reason, it is very, very important to carefully select which combinations to memoize. The second challenge is the efficient retrieval of memoized features. Identifying whether a certain combination is memoized or not, and even if it is memoized, finding the exact location of memoization result is very, very difficult. Utilizing a complex or irregular index structure for retrieval is not an option since assessing memoized result in such complex structures can often cause more memory assesses than the original operation without memoization. So we need simple and efficient structure with minimum additional memory assess. So we present Mercy, which is a lightweight memoization framework for efficient embedding reduction on commodity hardware. First, by analyzing patterns in training queries, Mercy constructs a memoization table. Then, utilizing this memoization table, Mercy can efficiently process the incoming embedding reduction operations. With memoization, Mercy achieves substantial speed up over the conventional implementation on many real-world datasets. Let's begin with offline processing. This slide shows a high-level overview of Mercy's offline processing. First, given the training queries and the set of features, Mercy utilizes our novel algorithm to cluster these features into multiple, variable-sized, exclusive clusters as you can see. Our clustering algorithm focuses on locating frequently co-appearing feature sets into a single cluster. Basically, this clustering allows us to mostly focus on potential memoization opportunities within each cluster. Then, Mercy memoizes all possible embedding reduction results within each cluster. In Mercy's offline processing, the very first step is to partition the features into equal size and coarse-grained partitions using hypergraph partitioning algorithms, which are a type of already well-known clustering algorithm. Basically, hypergraph partitioning algorithms locates the frequently co-appearing features into a coarse-grained partition like this. This is a well-known NP-complete problem, and there exist many prior literatures presenting heuristic solutions. Our work exploits one of them, named Pato, and generates coarse-grained partitions with it. Features 0, 1, 4, and 5 are assigned to the first coarse-grained partition, and similarly, feature 2, 3, 6, and 7 are assigned to the second coarse-grained partition. The second stage is correlation-aware variable size clustering. With coarse-grained and equal size partitions from step 1, in step 2, Mercy constructs fine-grained clusters within each coarse-grained partition with our novel clustering algorithm. So as a result of step 2, we merge frequently co-appearing features into a single cluster, so we create multiple clusters for each partition. The basic idea of our novel clustering algorithm is to evaluate benefit and cost for merging all possible pair of features within each coarse-grained partitions, and select the one pair across all coarse-grained partition that provides the most benefits for the cost and merge them as one cluster. 
The purpose of this fine grain clustering is to partition features with variable size, which is the most important idea that maximizes the benefit of memoization. I am going to go through a simple example of analyzing the benefit and the cost for merging feature 1 and feature 5. First, the benefit of merging feature 1 and 5 and memoizing embedding 1 plus embedding 5 is 3. This is because query 1, 4, and 5 all contain feature 1 and 5 at the same time. So memoizing embedding 1 plus embedding 5 results in 1 less fetches for each query. On the other hand, the cost is additional capacity required to store one extra embedding vector, embedding 1 plus embedding 5. In this case, the benefit to cost ratio is 3 divided by 1, which is 3. The same process is repeated for all possible pairs within each coarse grain partition. And then the one with the highest benefit to cost ratio is selected. In other words, the selected pair is the one that brings a large number of memory assess reduction for a relatively small extra capacity cost. In this case, let us assume that the selected pair to merge was feature 1 and 5, just the one that we saw from the previous example. As you can see, feature 1 and 5 are now merged. The same process of benefit to cost analysis and merging is repeated for multiple times. Specifically, this process is repeated as long as the aggregate capacity cost from memoization does not exceed the user specified value. This is an example of how it looks like after merging is repeated until its end. Once this merging process finishes, the next step is to group these fine grain clusters. In this step, we collect clusters with the same size as a group, and we place group with the largest cluster size first and the smallest cluster size at the end. Here, we call the set of clusters whose size is 4 to be group 0, and the next following set of clusters whose size is 3 to be group 1, and so on. Then, after this grouping, Mercy remaps feature IDs so that feature IDs monotonically increases from left to right. This remapping makes feature IDs within the single cluster to be contiguous. Such a characteristic later simplifies the retrieval of memoized values. The final step of offline processing is to construct a memoization table. Specifically, for each partition's embedding reduction results for all combinations within the cluster are stored in 1D array. For example, a cluster having features 0, 1, 2, and 3 memorizes 15 different results because the number of non-empty subsets for the 4 element set is 15. Then, all these memoized results are concatenated to construct a single large memoization table. For the concatenation, arrays are ordered by group, then cluster ID within the group as shown in the slide. Finally, each group's offset in the memoization table is recorded and will be utilized for the retrieval of memoized values. For example, for group 2, we store minimum feature number in group 2 and start address where memoized result for group 2 is stored, and the number of feature in the cluster in group 2. Now, let's see what Mercy does at online query processing phase. From now on, I will briefly explain how Mercy utilizes this memoization table and metadata table to retrieve the memoized results. Given a query, the first task is to identify group and cluster of each feature. For example, how can you find cluster ID for feature 22? First, we need to find which group that feature 22 belongs to. By inspecting the metadata table, we can find out that feature 22 belongs to group 2, where each cluster has two elements. Second, then we can find out the cluster that feature 22 belongs to. Um, since the feature 20 and feature 21 belongs to the first cluster, which is cluster 0 in group 2, it is obvious that feature 22 belongs to cluster 1 within the same group. Also, we can find that feature 23 belongs to the same cluster with feature 22. 
Once we figure out group and cluster of each feature, it is now time to retrieve memoize result for the features that belong to the same cluster. For example, in the previous slide, we found that feature 22 and feature 23 belongs to the same cluster. In that case, we should find the corresponding row of set in the memoization table that stores embedding 22 plus embedding 23. The row offset of specific combination breaks down to two parts, base offset and combination offset. First, base offset corresponds to the start row offset for a specific cluster of specific group. And we know that feature 22 and feature 23 belongs to cluster 1 of group 2. So we first get offset of group 2 simply by inspecting the metadata table, which is 320. Then we can calculate the start offset of cluster 1 from 320. This is very simple since all clusters in group 2 requires three entries in the memoization table. We just need to multiply the cluster ID and 3. Second, within the cluster, the location of embedding 22 plus embedding 23 is the third. We directly know this by multi-out vector representation of features in cluster 1. So as a result, we retrieve the memoized result from 326th row in the memoization table. Here's the evaluation result for Mercy. We evaluate C++ implementation of the baseline and Mercy on a 16-core Intel Xeon server processor on the Amazon Web Service platform with M5 8x large instance. We run various real-world datasets as well as synthetic datasets. Each bar in the graph represents the capacity overhead over the original embedding table size. For instance, plus 0.5x indicates that additional capacity incurred by memoization is the health of the original embedding table size. With the capacity overhead of memoization to be one times of the original embedding table size, the average speed up is 58 and 87% for a synthetic and real data set. And with more aggressive memoization, that means 8 times more capacity, the average speed of improvement was around 97 and 106% for a synthetic and real data set. We also measured the memory assess count for each memoization configuration. We observed that with 1 times capacity overhead, Mercy achieves 21% and 37% memory assess count reduction on average for a synthetic and real data set. And with 8 times capacity overhead, Mercy achieves further memory assess count reduction. Finally, Mercy also reduces the CPU energy consumptions by reducing the number of memory assesses. To wrap up, we propose Mercy memoization for embedding reduction with clustering, a novel memoization framework for efficient embedding reduction. We identified opportunities for applying memoization to efficient embedding reduction for the first time. We introduced correlation-aware variable size clustering, a novel clustering scheme that carefully weighs the benefit and costs of memoization. Mercy utilizes such techniques so maximizes the benefit of memoization. Thank you for listening.